This week in Nerf, we've got the Hades in stores, a new FDL and open source flywheels. I'm Jangular and this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news every Saturday morning. Let's get right on into it. The rival Hades has arrived in Mexico for now. Reddit user Don Sacco posted on Reddit a picture of the Hades on a shelf and it is cool to see that this is now available, we have had the Scavenger, now this, and we're seeing more and more things starting to pop up. I think we can call this safely the official uh, start of release season. So get hunting, get out there. Uh, we should have some DPCI numbers starting to leak out in the near future, so you can use those to start hunting. Uh, as soon as I have a good link to all of them, I will post that down below in the info for this. Uh, this is interesting to me that we saw this in Mexico first. I don't think that I have seen that been the case in the last few years that they have gotten any early but that is a good indicator that we should start seeing them other places in North America in the near future uh, I would think the West Coast should be seeing them if Mexico started seeing them so that's definitely interesting keep your eyes out for that I mean we've also got plenty of other good things to look forward to I know I am super excited about the Prometheus I want one I need one I want that to come out soon. That's going to be so much fun. But the Hades should be relatively popular because the Artemis was such a popular blaster and still is a popular blaster. So you double the capacity and keep the function of it. I'm sure people will be excited and looking forward to this blaster. So if you want to go find it as soon as I have the DPCI numbers, like I said, I will post those down below for all of you. Uh, let's go ahead and move on, though, to something I'm relatively excited about, very excited about, and that is the FDL-3. Recently, Project FDL posted in a group that the FDL-3 is in the works. Now, there's no release date, no schedule, uh, no price, none of the details, just that the blaster is in the works. And that is exciting uh, because the FDL-2 has become a very popular platform among nerfers. Uh, that said, there are some limitations to the FDL-2 in the sense that, uh, well, Project FDL has said that they are looking at things like the base price, ergonomics, aesthetics, customization, all those points they want to hit to improve upon, uh, to make them even better. So, they are saying that they aren't going to remove the FDL 2, that's got, not going anywhere, but the FDL 3 is in the works and it is going to come out. Something that I think is really cool is they are listening to the community for this blaster. They are taking uh, into consideration all the things people have said. Actually, recently in a podcast, a DB Test podcast, Project FDL actually talked about how much they've been listening to the community and taking those things into consideration while working on this newer project and that they do have things in the works and they are excited about them. So I'm excited about them. Um, I think it's great that we are potentially, now obviously nothing is set in stone, but since they said they are working on that base price, it would be really cool if they could get that base price down to a little bit lower. That would open these up to even more players and we could see them in the hands of more and more players at more and more games. Right now, unless you're in one of the hot spots, you're not seeing a ton of these blasters. Uh, but I would love to see that change. Now, I do have a lot of thoughts on this, but I actually have an FDL2 review in the works, which I will discuss all of my thoughts on that, so I will save that for that instead of post or talking about that here. But regardless, I'm really excited about this and looking forward to hearing more as it comes out because I love when things continue to improve and take that community interaction into, into account and just make the best thing that they can for our hobby and our community. So I will be very attentively paying attention and keeping track of this and keeping you all apprised of what happens as it happens. With that said, the FDL2 does use 3D printed flywheels, which uh, kind of segues us into our next topic, and that is the open wheel. This is an open source printed flywheel project uh, that is being posted by I will put the name up right here because for some reason I didn't put it on my notes, but it's right, it's it's over here. You know, my apologies for spacing out, but it is a really cool idea that is uh, hopefully going to be well received and perform well. Uh, the idea here is that they are taking a 
profile that's more circular as opposed to uh, say the cyclone flywheels that are a bit flatter but still have some concavity this is going for like a circular concavity so the idea is that it will give less overall dart stress when shooting which should in theory lead to less dart heads being ripped off less dart wear stuff like that um, the the really interesting thing to me though beyond just that aspect is that uh, when it comes to 3D printed flywheels and brush motors, people have noticed that uh, one of the points of failure is the shaft hole because over time the shaft hole wears out and then the wheels will fly off or, or some issue will occur. So they are trying to circumvent this by using shaft collars and grub screws to insert into that to grab onto the shaft so that way it doesn't go anywhere. I think that's very interesting and a clever idea to try and uh, make things more available to the masses. Now, this will require a little bit more work on the end user's part to uh, set all this up, insert the screw or the, uh, the shaft collar, then use the grub screw to make sure it's all in right. But if it yields good results, then it's worthwhile. And you know me, I like options. This is another option, so I'm very curious to take a look at this and see, especially once other people get their hands on them and how they perform for the masses in general. Uh, but that link for the Thingiverse page and post and all that is going to be down below if you want to check it out. And they actually, in the PDF, in the Thingiverse file, they have links to all the places to buy things like the shaft collars and the grub screws and, and uh, all the necessary components, which is great that we don't have to go hunting for them. So kudos to them. This is, this is a cool idea. Uh, and the fact that it's open source is even better. So big up to them. Go check it out. I'm curious to see how they perform. Let's get to something that we have been missing since last week we didn't get to do one. And that is the mod of the week. This comes to us from Wales 8 And this is not your average Straven. This is a throwback to a classic that has somewhat fallen out of favor recently. And that is the Straven. Now, this is not an integration completely. Uh, this is two separate blasters with a little bit of work done to the Raven. The Raven has had its muzzle removed and replaced with a stock attachment point. So you can now place a Strife or really any blaster on, fr on the front of the Raven and use the Raven not only as a storage option and a long stock, but you can also separate the two and if you want to dual wield for a short while, you can dual wield and then stick it back together and have your long blaster like your rifle style and just be good. It's a neat kind of entertaining idea. It's not anything that's like uh, the most intensive amount of work ever or anything like that, but it's just, it's entertaining. I thought this was such a clever little idea. I mean, granted, you're not going to have the best functionality when the two are combined because obviously the Raven can't shoot because it would just shoot into the stock point of the Strife. Is you're gonna have to operate your strife with your offhand or switch orientation but it's just so it's just so entertaining to me i thought it was just super clever and super fun and that to me made it worthwhile to share with all of you because it was a fun and different take on something that uh people may have grown tired of and i dig the idea of uh being able to split up your blaster and split your fire in two different directions if you want to, then reattach it and you're good to go for single again. Like that to me is just kind of neat. So I felt like I had to share this to all of you because it is a fun mod that I thought was very, very entertaining. Uh, so go check that out. That's gonna bring us to our video of the week. And this comes to us from Newport Nerfer. This is Speedfort. Uh, this is actually footage from Fusion that Newport Nerfer has edited, and this is an interesting game type that I thought was kind of cool. Uh, it's like a defenders versus attackers game type where the attackers have to uh, get the defenders out of their tower, and whichever team does it quickest, so you'll switch back and forth each round, uh, is the winner. However, there's a little bit of a caveat, a little difference in here in that the uh, defenders, while they only have one life, as you would likely expect for an attack versus defend and fortification scenario, the kicker here is that defenders only have one full magazine at the start of the game. So they have to pick their shots very, very carefully. This prevents the defenders from being able to just stall out for 
forever and just make the game long and drawn out, hence speed for it, as the defenders have a, a uh, very real limitation on their darts and number of shots they can take. So taking them wisely is just so important in this, and it adds another layer to the gameplay that I think is very interesting and very fun. Uh, so, that video is definitely worth checking out, checking out uh, Newport Nerfer and, and Fusion on top of that, but before we get to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you as always to our patrons that make this channel possible to continue to grow the way it has been, and if you have any ideas for mods and videos of the week, please always leave them down below. I love hearing from all of you, and uh, just getting to, getting to see the things that you find that maybe slip through the cracks. Uh, again, Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out the video of the week, that's going to be right over here. Uh, go check that out. Check out everything and let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on this week's news. I know I'm amped, especially for that FDL3, because I want to see what happens and how much changes in it. But if you're new to the channel enjoy this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button for the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.